So grasshoppers have a wide host range. They can affect a lot of our agronomic crops like our small grains, corn, and alfalfa. And they can also be found in pasture lands with a lot of grasses and various weed species. And if problems are really severe, they can be a problem in our urban areas, like within our home landscapes and home gardens as well. Like we mentioned with their biology, grasshoppers have chewing mouth parts that tear away plant tissues. Grasshoppers are commonly thought of as foliage feeders, but will also feed on flowers, fruits, seed heads, stems, and essentially all above ground parts that the plant has. If numbers are high enough, grasshopper feeding can lead to economic damage for farmers. Often, fence rows and roadsides adjacent to crops serve as the major source of grasshoppers. As the vegetation dries up in such areas, grasshoppers that hatched and matured there will move into adjacent crops. Grasshopper control products are available in spray, dust, or bait formulations. Dust and baits are relatively expensive but can be applied to specific areas without sophisticated equipment. Dust do not readily adhere to the foliage and must be reapplied frequently. Baits must be consumed and are most effective when host plants are scarce, small, or have dried up. Use of carbaryl baits, like wheat bran laced with carbaryl, is particularly desirable alternative to spraying for grasshoppers in pastures, fence, fence rows, wasteland, and other roadsides. Spread evenly throughout the habitat, the bait selectively kills only grasshoppers and other insects that consume it while foraging. Nymphs are most likely to injure crops while actively foraging for dry plant material on the ground, and therefore their populations are very effectively reduced in number by baits. Malathion and carbaryl are relatively non-toxic to humans and may be sprayed to kill grasshoppers along the roadsides and fences. Make sure you follow the label instructions. Listed here are other pro products that are labeled for grasshopper control in the state of Utah. These sprays will be most effective when used against nymphs rather than the adults. Several reduced risk products for grasshopper control are also available in Utah. Nosema locoste, sold as Nolobate, is a microsporian protozoa that infects grasshoppers through baiting. Under ideal conditions, coinciding with peak nymphal emergence, nolobate will kill 50 to 70% of the population and about 35 to 50% of the surviving grasshoppers will be infected. These infected grasshoppers are weakened, they feed less and produce fewer eggs. Many other natural occurring enemies for grasshoppers in Utah do exist. This can include other arthropods, birds, mammals, and reptiles. If you own property with a lot of pasture and rangeland in rural areas in Utah, we recommend you look into the USDA APHIS's Grasshopper Management Program and find out if you can qualify for funding for their spray and treatment programs. If you live in a residential area, you need to work with your neighbors and community to suppress grasshopper populations. Treating as wide an area as possible is the key to success. When grasshoppers become adults, they can travel great distances and may not remain in one area long enough for an insecticide to be infective. If you have any questions about identifying grasshoppers or questions about grasshopper behavior or biology, feel free to contact the Utah Plant Pest Diagnostic Lab. If you guys have additional questions, you can also contact your USU Extension County office near you.